this is the answers to the algebra regions, June, 2018 short response. So in question number 25, all that you need to do is type this into your Y equals the square root of X plus two. Just make sure that your plus two is inside underneath your square root symbol and not after it. You only want to graph it from negative two to positive seven. It includes the negative two. It includes the positive seven. So no arrows on the ends, but you would use a closed dot. If this, was, if this didn't have the or equal to sign, you'd use an open dot. So just type this into your Y equals, hit second and table to find your coordinates for each of these. You do have to make a little bit of estimations along the middle here because they end up as decimals, but it would just look like that. In question number 26, Caleb claims that the ordered pairs shown in the table below are from a non-linear function. So that means when you graph it, it does not form a line. State if Caleb is correct, explain your reasoning. So Caleb is correct. Um, when you graph it, it does not form a straight line. Notice how I drew a picture of the points, all right? This clearly forms a like U-shaped type graph, all right? Also a different way that you could have stated that he is correct is if you're not adding the same number each time. Notice that to get from zero to one to two to three, we're adding by two, adding by four, adding by eight, we're not adding by the same number each time. If we were adding by the same number each time, it would form a line. In question number 27, I would do this one, all right, solving for X to the nearest 10th, I would do this one by using the quadratic formula. Notice that it says the nearest 10th. So we wouldn't want to do reverse FOIL to it because it's not gonna come out, all right? Um, so what we wanna do here is use the quadratic formula, negative B, so negative one, plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is one squared, minus four times A times C, so times one times negative five, all over two times A, two times one. Type this part into the calculator, you get 21, so negative one plus or minus 21 over two. Then you wanna split it into two with one half being the plus, one half being the minus. So we have negative one plus the square root of 21 all divided by two and we get 1.8. Be very careful when you type it into the calculator. You have to either put parentheses around this, like this when you go to type it into the calculator or do negative one plus radical 21 hit equals and then divide by two. If you just type it in as one long string, if you type it in as negative one plus the square root of 21 divided by two, because of order of operations, it would do negative, it would do radical 21 divided by two first, and then add negative one to it, which would give you the wrong answer. So you just gotta be careful about how you type things in. In question number 28, the graph of the function P of X is represented below. On the same set of axes, sketch the function P, of x plus two. Well, adding two to the x value makes it go two places to the left. What would I do for this question? Well, I would just type in, for example, for x, let's say that we have y equals x squared. That's what the graph of this is. And then we would add two just to the x. So that x squared would become x plus two squared because we're adding two to just the x value. So we graph this, we graph this, we end up with this as a graph because we're translating it two places to the left. That's what adding two to just the X value does. In question number 29, two different ways that you could do this. So you have this equation. Um, it's being dropped from a tower. An apple is being dropped from a tower 256 feet high. Um, determine algebraically the number of seconds that it takes the apple to hit the ground. Now hitting the ground is equal to zero. So I could set that equation equal to zero and solve. How would I solve it? I would get the letter onto one side. So I'd do plus 16 T squared and plus 16 T squared. Now it's just a sort of like one step looking equation. We would add, we would, sorry, we would have 16 times T squared. So I'll divide by 16 and divide by 16. Those would cancel out. So I have 16 or sorry, T squared equals 16 because 256 divided by 16 is 16. The opposite of T squared, the opposite of squaring a number is to take the square root. So that would become four. 
um, we, it would really be plus or minus four and we would reject the negative four. Or the probably easier way to do it is to use the quadratic formula, all right? We don't have a B value here because there is no X value. That's why our B value is zero. So sub it into the quadratic formula, you end up with a four and a negative four, always reject the negative time because that doesn't make any sense. So it would be four seconds. In question number 30, solve the equation below algebraically for the exact value. Now you gotta be a little bit careful on this one. The first thing that we wanna do is distribute and distribute negative two thirds times X, negative two thirds times five. I left it in the form of a fraction. You could have changed them to decimals. That's fine, nothing wrong with that. Um, we need to combine our like terms on this side. We have a plain number and a plain number. So adding together six and negative 10 thirds is eight thirds. Um, now we have negative, we have eight thirds minus two thirds X equals four X, get all the letters on the one side by adding two thirds X. Um, this is a fraction. I chose to multiply by the reciprocal. Again, you could have changed them into decimals and just use the decimal form. That's fine. Um, so I chose to multiply by three fourteenths and three fourteenths. You end up with eight fourteenths or four sevenths. Either of those two answers would be fine. Um, if you change it into a decimal, you would really get this on your calculator. Now, where this question gets tricky um, is if you wrote this as your answer, this big long decimal answer, notice how it starts going five, seven, one, four, and it ends in five, seven, one, four. That's really a repeating decimal. It's 0 0.571428, 571428. Unfortunately, the calculator cuts it off. So you can't see that, but because this ending part is 5714, you can predict that that's gonna be a repeating decimal. So this answer would be fine as well, as long as you use that repeating sign. That one's a little bit tricky. In question number 31, is the product, product means to multiply, of radical 16 and four sevenths, rational or irrational? You've seen how we have these on every single Regents exam. Um, so what you're multiplying is the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is a rational number and you're multiplying it by four sevenths. Four sevenths is a fraction, that is a rational number. So you're doing a rational times a rational. A rational times a rational is always a rational number. Um, if we multiply this out, you'd get 16 sevenths, right? Um, it looks, if you change it into a decimal, it looks like it's irrational, but it's really not. Um, notice again, we have that repeating decimal part. Notice how we have a two eight and a two eight. This next number is five where this next number is six, but notice that that rounds, all right? So it's really starts repeating and repeating and repeating after that. So that is a rational number. In question number 32, you are doing a piecewise graph um, for, for all the values that are less than two. Now remember, less than two is gonna be an open dot. So you're gonna graph negative one half X for all the values that are less than two. I would type it into your Y equals and do second and table to find all your points starting with two and all the ones that are less than that. So that's this part of the graph. Make sure that you have an open dot right here. Um, and then for the values from two and higher, you're gonna just graph X. So again, type in Y equals X and hit second and table to find your values. You do need a close dot here. Also make sure that you realize that they're going on and on forever, both to negative infinity and positive infinity. So you do need an arrow on both ends. In question number 33, a population of rabbits in a lab can be modeled by the function 20 times 1.041 to the X power where X represents the number of days since the population was first counted. Explain what 20 and 1.04 mean in the context of the problem. 20 is the starting number of rabbits. The number that goes outside the parentheses, that is your initial value or your starting value, all right? That's, how, what, that's what you're starting with. So you're starting with 20 rabbits. 1.014 is the growth factor, all right? One plus the growth rate, which is 1.4%, all right? Remember that this 0 0.014, that was really 1.4% as your rate. They changed it to a decimal by moving the decimal point over two places. 
That's where they're getting the 0 0.014 from. Um, determine to the nearest tenth the average rate from day 50 to day 100. The second part is rather difficult. What you need to do is you need to sub in day 50 and day 100 into that formula. When you do that, you get 40.0, 40.1, and you get 80.3. Now, you need to use the slope formula. Ask for the average rate of change. Rate of change is your slope. So you want to use the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So your first point, x1, y1, is 50 with the answer of 40.1. And then your x2 is 100 and 80.3. So you sub those numbers into the formula, you get 40.2 over 50. When you um, subtract, divide, top divided by bottom, you get this. They want you to round to the nearest tenth, so it would be 0 0.8. The second part, very, very difficult. In question number 34, um, the beginning part's a little bit confusing, especially in the A part to set it up. Um, so there's two parking garages. Garage A charges $7 to park for the first two hours and each additional hour costs $3. So what that equation looks like is $7. That $7 is for the first two hours, but they're being charged $3 every hour after that. So $3 times the number of hours, which is your X, but you have to subtract two from it. You have to subtract two from it because that seven was for those first two hours. So you're not getting charged $3 an hour every hour. It's every hour after the first two. So that's what your equation would look for this one. That's where this one was hard to set up right here in the second part. And then garage B just charges a flat rate of 325 per hour. So 325 times the number of hours. Determine algebraically when they will be the same. So you just want to set the two equations equal to each other and solve. Um, so you got to distribute, distribute, combine your like terms. You end up with after four hours. In question number 35, you have one just like this on your local algebra final exam. You have to rearrange these equations for y equals first. You need to try and get the y all by itself. To get this 2y all by itself, you need to subtract 3x and subtract 3x. You can't do a plain number minus an x, but we can switch around the order here. Bring down your 2y. So now we want to get the y all by itself. So divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. So those 2s cancel out. We have y is less than. This is, you could just leave it as a fraction. If you change it to a decimal and put negative 1.5, that's perfectly fine, but you don't have to. You could just leave it as a fraction because that's the slope. And then 14 divided by two is seven. So here's your equation. Um, when you go to graph it, just type it into your y equals and look at your second and table. Look at your points, all right? Um, so when you go and do that, less than or equal to, or equal to means that it's going to be a solid line and less than means that we're shading below it. For the second equation, we're trying to get this y all by itself. So we would do minus four x and minus four x, bring down your negative y, bring down your less than symbol. Two minus four x, we can't do a plain number minus a letter, but we can switch around the order to be negative four x plus two. This is really a negative one in front of that y. So we want to divide by negative one, negative one, and negative one. Now be very, very careful. Please remember that when you divide by a negative number, you have to flip the sign. You divide by a negative number, you have to flip the sign. So this less than changes into greater than. Negative four divided by negative one is a positive four. Two divided by one is negative two. So that's our equation. Greater than would be a dotted line when you go to graph it and we're shading above. So here's our line. I would type this into my Y equals, hit second and table, dotted line shading above the line. Now it says determine if the point one comma two is in the solution set. So one comma two is this purple point right here. All right, this is your one comma two right here. All right, is that in the solution set? Well, to be in the solution set, it has to be either on the solid line in the double shaded area or just plain in the double shaded area. This one happens to be in the shaded area for the red, but it's not in the shaded area for the blue. It's not in the shaded area for the blue because it's on the dotted line. 
points on the dotted line do not count in the solution set. Very, very important that you remember that. All right. If you're looking for it in the solution set, it has to be in the double shaded area and it can't be on the dotted line. In question number 36, you always have to make sure that the very first thing that you do when you start taking your exam is to turn on your stat diagnostics, all right, by hitting the mode button and going and turning on your stat diagnostics. You're going to type these numbers into your L1, type these numbers into your L2. It says to write the linear regression. So we're going to do stat calc number four, which is linear regression. And you're going to round all your values to the nearest hundredth. So that's two decimal places. So when you go and type those into your calculator, you get 0.96x plus 23.95. You have to make sure that you type that you write down your y equals as well, because that's part of the linear regression. State the correlation coefficient. That is your r value of the linear regression equation to the nearest hundredth. So to the nearest hundredth, when you look at your r value, you get 0 0.92. Explain what that means in the context of the data. Well, that would represent a strong positive correlation because that's really, really close to positive one. Um, so as the percent of students scoring 85 or higher in math increases, that's what this is, your English 85 or scoring 85 or better English students will also increase. Strong positive, so as the one increases, the other also increases. And in the last one, Dylan has a bank account that sorts coins. Uh, the panel shows that uh, 90 coins with a value of 1755 is in the bank. So if Dylan collects only dimes and quarters, so those 90 coins have to be made up of dimes and quarters. So the number of dimes plus the number of quarters equals 90 coins. The value of those coins, 10 cents times the number of dimes plus 25 cents times the number of quarters equals your 1755 total. Now you have to solve that system. All right, you have to solve that system. Um, algebraically determine the number of quarters. So we want the number of dimes to cancel out. So they're saying in our system here, we want to make opposites with our Ds. To get rid of this 0 0.10D, we have to multiply by negative 10 because that will create a one and a negative one. All right, I left this equation the same. That equation is the same as this one. I multiplied this top equation by negative 10 to create this bottom equation here. Those now we have a 1D and a negative 1D add going down. So those cancel out. So we end up with negative 1.5 Q equals negative 85.5 divide by negative 1.5. We get that the number of quarters was 57. In the third part, Dylan's mom told him that she would replace each one of his dimes with a quarter. So now all the dimes are gone, just has quarters. If he uses all his coins, would he have enough money to buy a game price at 2098? So 90 coins times the value of a quarter, which is 25 cents, gives you 2250. All right. Is that enough with a sales tax of 8%? Multiply the 2098 times 1.08 to figure out what it co what the cost is with tax. The cost of that would be 2266. You're looking for, um, you're looking for, he has 2250. So no, he would be 16 cents short. So again, you needed on this one, you needed 13 multiple choice questions, right? Or 26 total credits to get a passing score.